All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to put medication through a peg tube. Um, this also could work through an NG tube. Um, just make sure if you're putting it through an NG tube, you stop suction because if the person is hooked up to suction, you put meds in, of course it'll pull out um, the medication. Also make sure that placement has been ver verified through whatever your facility requires, whether that be an air bolus, a pH screening, or potentially an x-ray. So make sure placement has been verified uh, each time. So for this, we're gonna say if the doctor ordered a pill and a liquid, you wanna make sure that whenever you're doing medication, you do your six rights of medication. So that is Dr. Tim D, right? Dose, route, time, individual or patient, medication, and then documentation. So those are all things you have to always verify. You know your patient's name, date of birth, medication, check your order, do all of those medication requirements. So for this video, I'm just gonna show you guys, we're going to assume that the medications have already been checked. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to administer them. When you guys do medications, we don't know as nurses how every medicine is gonna interact with each other. So it's best to just put all the medication in separate um, little cups. So the first one we're gonna do is a liquid medicine. So I've verified all of the um, things I need to do with the medication. You want to open up your medicine. Whenever you do a liquid medicine, your hand needs to go over the label. The reason you're doing that is so that way if any meds drip down, it doesn't destroy the label. Then when you're pouring, you need to be at eye level with it flat on a table. We're gonna say that doctor ordered 10 cc's of this liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour nice and slow. I got exactly 10 cc's. You cannot go above, you cannot go below because that would be over medication or under medicating your patient. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then I wanna go ahead and do a tablet. So for this tablet, I'm gonna go ahead and put the tablet in our lid. And I have a pill crusher here. Make sure you always clean the pill crusher between pills because you don't know what's been in there. Um, these crushers are single patient use. There are also some of the other ones. You guys may have seen like a silent night or something. So then you're going to squeeze this in here. And you have to just kind of keep wiggling it around, squish it around. Remember these tubes are surgically put into our patient. Um, so we have to make sure that we really protect them. So this needs to be ground up into a very fine, fine powder. And if I look in there, we're, we're pretty good. So let's do a couple more little squishes. Okay, I'm gonna put that in here. Now it does look like there's a little piece in there, so I'm gonna kind of break it up a little bit. Okay. So if a patient has a G-tube at home, Sometimes they'll use water, like maybe tap water. We don't recommend that in the hospital um, just because there's a lot more germs involved. So you wanna make sure that you use whatever it is that you have available, usually it's like sterile water. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this sterile water here. Make sure your sterile water is labeled with the date and the time if it's already been opened and used. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of it in with your medication. Between each med, we have to flush. Double check to make sure that your doctor um, doesn't have like a fluid restriction on your patient. I'm gonna go ahead just cause I wanna monitor my intake and output. And I'm going to look, let's just do about 20 between pills. Oh, a little bit too much, that's all right. This helps with your intake and output. Perfect. And then I'm gonna look at this one here and also go to about the 20. Okay. I like to be really organized. So I've got water, medication, water, medication, water. So um, I'm gonna leave the sterile water here and ready just in case I need to flush more. So. As I mentioned, we're gonna say we've already verified placement. Um, you have multiple tubes here. This one right here, this is 10 mLs. That's the balloon that holds it in. So we don't wanna touch that. 
then these two here a lot of times one is for food and the other one is for medication so we're going to take a peek at which one and for this one the patient does not have a specific thing infusing so let's go ahead and we'll just take a peek at our tubes all right this one this one's a little bigger so i think we're going to use that one I have a syringe. This one is a Tumi syringe. Um, it could be a 6ml syringe, but make sure it's not one with a lure lock. A lure lock is the one you connect like to an IV. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to connect this here. I like to hold with my pinky, I hold the tube, and with my first finger and middle or thumb, I hold the actual syringe, and then the other ones I just kind of hold in the middle. That just helps me stabilize it. Now, if your patient starts to cough, be ready to put your hand on top because if they cough, sometimes stuff comes flying out. So first thing I wanna do is, let me make sure my tubing is open down here. I'm going to flush my tubing. And you guys can see my fluids going down. Let me turn it that way. So there's 20 mLs. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my first medicine. We're going to let it go down. And then I want to flush between, just because there might be some of that medicine, another 20. And then we've got the powder. The biggest thing is make sure that powder is nice and dissolved. I'm going to drop it in. Now, there's a little powder left in the cup. So I might go ahead and just put a little bit more saline in. Because that's going to help kind of get some of that medicine. I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek, see how much I got. We've got 10 there. So there's the last of that medicine. So there's a couple tens. And then you wanna just make sure you always flush it in the back. And again, make sure that you monitor how much you put into your patient. All right. Now, once we're done, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my syringe and plug it back up. Okay, so now when I'm doing my intake and output, I can look and I had 10 mLs and 10 mLs twice in here. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So 90 milliliters of water. So if your patient has like a fluid restriction, this is something that you need to be very cautious of and make sure that you monitor it very closely. Um, whenever you use any of like the sterile water or any of these syringes, if they still look clean, then as long as they're labeled, you can use them for 24 hours. So make sure everything is labeled um, with a permanent marker. If it's not labeled, it's best just go ahead, throw it out and get your another, get another set.